Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Your Health is Your Choice, right here on selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and my guest today is Michelle Drake. We're going to be talking about mastering your habits. I know we've got some habits that really should be not elevating your life, but should be deleting, because it's very hard to break an old habit. You know, she says, mastering your habits, elevate your life. It was her mess that she found a message in and she guided thousands of people to their sanctuary in life. It benefits everyone that has not yet found or allowed the power of consistency in thought and action to assist their elevated existence and overwhelm the stress has been running their show. <laughs> Boy, do I know that one. I love, uh, she said she loves being witness to a blossoming life and people reclaiming youthful vitality. Developing a new wellness practice is hard. We often struggle to realize our aspirations and if we do not get started and stay consistent it remains difficult in forming a new habit and she says we've made practicing a new behavior fun and easy for you well this is very apropos for the end of the year um you know because we're looking at going into the festive season where it seems anything gets thrown out of the window but we all like to go into the new year we can we're going to do this year and but old habits seep in so how do you change those new habits um Michelle Elizabeth Drake is a fitness and alternative health professional for over 30 years. She's known as the age reversal specialist. And she's also a freelance journalist for Canada Living, Homemakers, El Chantanel, as well as articles on Fitness RX, Omaha Rinkside, Fitness Trainer, and many more. And she's a co author of One Habit to Thrive in a Post COVID World. Oh boy. Yeah. And we're going to be talking about her programs today and also something else that she's doing, which is kind of a gifting forward. So lots to talk about. Welcome to oh the show, hell, Michelle. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for having me, Sarah. That was quite a mouthful you had there. <laughs> Well, you do so much, but let's yeah, just start right. off. Habits. It yeah. is so easy to get into a bad habit and it's, and it's unconscious. We don't realize we're doing it. And then we may catch ourselves, oh, I need to break that habit. But the habit feels like it's really got hold of you. And it's how do we change that habit? Um, and it, we almost stress out over it, don't we? Well, here's, here's the thing about the sentences that I just witnessed in yourself. Um, one of the things that is super powerful with the brain in neuroscience is NLP. And I'm positive that you know about that. Oh, yes. So, so with the neuro-linguistic programming, the first thing that we have to watch out for is the thought pattern like you've brought to the table there, which is like so many feel the same way, is things don't have to be hard. Mm. They don't have to be arduous. You don't have to break things. Um, what I find works a lot better is that you embrace a new positive habit. Let it take over some of the time that you might have encouraged yourself to do something other. Mm -hmm. And then it just starts to flip. It's, it's almost like a, um, a choice you make at that moment right? Are you going to eat this beautiful, colorful rainbow meal? Or are you going to revert to some of your uh, processed drive through options? Mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So it's not like you're going to go out and have both of them. Right. Usually. Yeah. Right? Yes. So, so, yeah, I, was, I, was just gonna, I was I was trying to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to assume anything. Um, but at the same time, it, it was like you you go into the kitchen with this mindset that this is one of the most intimate relationships you're about to ever have is what you put in your mouth because you're literally breaking down 
the fibers of that food and it starts to build a matrix of your own cells all over again so it's not even like you're just eating something you you literally are you are what you digest yes you are and what you so, eat right yeah yes. yeah yeah well not not so much you are what you eat it is you are what you digest which mm. is really interesting because a lot of times we are um, challenged in that manner mm. where we're not digesting properly. And so a lot of the nutrients are not being absorbed by the body. And that's another thing that we need to work on as we get going and you get a little more coaching from some guided professionals that can help you in those areas. Because if you are putting live food in and that you want to make sure that the body's absorbing that goodness. Right. It's a balance of foods, isn't it? I mean, we, we, there's so much information out there and it's like, know your body, but I, you know, there's, there's a wonderful woman I had on for five years as a, as a host here with Wise Health, and she was in her 80s. She used to be known as Snake Oil Woman, uh, because back in her day in the 60s, you know, it was all, you know, far out woo-woo stuff. And she would talk about that the, the liver, the colon, and the kidney as being the three most important organs in the body, that if they're not functioning properly, then nothing else is going to function properly. But we don't really put emphasis on, like colon, our digestive system. And if the food isn't complementary to one another, it's not going to digest harmoniously, is it? It's going to be conflicting. And they've done many, many studies which are extremely helpful in the day and age that we're living in with so many people struggling with their, their brain health mm. is like the, the gut and the brain are completely aligned. They're completely yes. connected. And so a lot of people that are feeling depressed or anxious or, um, you know, having these huge swings in their um, ability to focus and everything else, it could just be what they're eating. Mm -hmm. And nobody would have ever pinpointed that. And, but, uh, but why? I mean, because we talk about nutrition all the time, mm -hmm. brain health, you know, uh, uh, you know, energized health, you know, uh, you know, our own sustainability. And again, there's been so much conflicting stuff out there for people that they do get confused. And that's why they revert back to kind of bad habits or old habits, because it's easier. Um, but if we you know, I'm, I'm easier and more addictive. So, that, yeah. so yeah. that's where, that's where you come into a space with habits that is really important to recognize is that there is going to be a spot where you really need the uh, assistance of a coach or, mm -hmm. or somebody that knows what they're talking about to get you over that hurdle of yeah. the particular particular addiction, because when we are, let's say, sugar fiends or carb fiends or whatnot, uh, we, we will in the morning spike our sugar. Mm. And what happens is that it doesn't just kind of go back and then go nice and regular right. through the day, it'll spike and then it will plummet right, right down. And then at that point, physiologically and psychologically, we need something to bring our sugars back up. Hmm. And so then we make another poor choice hmm. and then it's a, a series of poor choices through that entire day. And that's why often somebody will write off an entire day. They'll say, Oh, I'll start again tomorrow. Right. Because they can't get back on that really nice train of, of that equilibrium of that rhythm. Yes. And, um, and I also found, you know, for myself, because I have been diagnosed with type two diabetes and so that's a huge diagnosis, especially mm -hmm. for someone that isn't carrying a lot of extra weight or anything like that, because sometimes you can combat it easily when you get on a program where you just lose the weight. Yes. But for me, it's just that I have a very, um, very sensitive carb um, reaction in my body. So I have to be very conscious and cautious of that. And for myself, I love to go to a naturopath because they really, they don't really care what your symptoms are, except for it's like the pieces of a puzzle mm. that they put together to help bring your body to homeostasis. And so at that point, you know, I, I've now got into um, intermittent fasting, which is the big buzzword these days, mm -hmm. but it really does agree with me. And I actually prepare my body properly. And I also go on prolonged water fasts, which I have listened to many research on uh, research 
podcasts and different things that are clinically saying that a prolonged water fast one time a year will reduce your risk of cancer by up to 98%. Wow. So, so it's not easy for people to do, nor do I say that people should do it without the help of a naturopathic doctor or someone by their side, helping them through. But I I've done seven days before and it, I didn't even phase me. I actually, the only reason I ate at that moment was because I had been cooking up a storm for some <laughs> odd reason. My kids were like, what is going on? Like everything in the fridge was like, and this goes with this and this goes, and I wasn't even eating anything. I was mm-hmm. drinking water and my brain was so sharp because it was working on ketones and I was so full of energy and my sugar cravings were gone, like obliterated mm-hmm. at that point. And I also just noticed that I felt like myself and you could really sense that the body had taken away a lot of the things that it didn't need, the excess fat, the, and this is what they're claiming is, or I shouldn't say claiming because that's the wrong word to use when you're talking about health and things like that. But um, they're saying that it would go after things that your body doesn't usually really need, like a tumor before mm-hmm. it would take away your muscle. Right, mass. right. Now it's going to take a little bit of your muscle mass at the same time. But if you're working out, you'll be fine. You'll get it back. The even, thing is even in menopause. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. You know, the thing is, is that when, as you said, if you introduce a good habit um, and you get immersed into that good habit, you feel good mentally, physically, you know, um, everything you're putting in your mouth, the way your stomach responds to it, you really feel good with it. You know, I'm a six veganite person. I love my veggies. You know, you oh, can good. keep it's you good. can keep the meat, right? I love plant okay, based nice. plant nice. things. Nice. Um, I you know I do. I have occasionally eaten chicken and fish. I still have that now and again. My other children are completely vegan, um, mm-hmm. and there's so many wonderful varieties with vegan food today or plant based food today, or just simply the delight of the vegetables and the flavors together and spices and this and that. Oh, and yeah. one. One needs to be a little adventurous and kind of try things out. And you'll know if it agrees with you or not. I know I can't, you know, I can't go too crazy on chickpeas and things like that. It's too aggressive for my stomach. So a little on that now and again, rather than all the time. It's we've just got to be a little investigative and try things out. And I'm quite happy not to eat the meat. Also, at the same time, you are so satisfied with the goodness of the food that Mm. you're not hungry. Oh, right, true. so you're not going to go nibbling, and mm-hmm. you're not craving the sugars. That's right, and I know there is a lot of um, justification in eating the foods that are to your area, like a hundred mile radius right. to your area. And I think that that's really an interesting. There's a few cookbooks on that that where you're eating around what you would have normally. Yeah, and I also know that with any family we have about 10 meals that we will rotate through. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what's interesting is to write those 10 meals down and then to tweak them to mm-hmm. be that little healthier. Yeah. Um, one, of, one of the things I'll always remember a holistic nutritionist I was working with, she said the easiest way you can put more dark greens in your in your meals is just to line your plate with them doesn't matter if you were eating lasagna it doesn't matter right, right? you were going to just uh I'm, I'm kicking over things over here with my hand. <laughs> so, um but but you just line your plate with spinach or baby spinach or whatnot and then all of a sudden you've got those extra greens in mm. and it's just a really neat thing to if you start to lose the overwhelm because this is the thing people get so bogged down with how much they have to do and how chaotic it is but meanwhile the amount of energy that it's taken them to procrastinate and to complain about it in that time they could have just done it and it would have yes exactly And and once you get cooking like real good cooking at home it starts to become like a really fun game because you're like oh and what do I have left today to work with, right? Like right. everything's like yes. a ratatouille or, yeah. <laughs> or a stew, right? Of sorts type but of thing. The thing is you can still have the foods you love. You know, I'm British. My kids were brought up on shepherd's pie. We can right. still have shepherd's pie. Eve's yeah. ground beef, you know, which is plant-based meat is yeah. delicious. Add yeah. a few more mushrooms to it for a little more texture and it's great. 
great yes. for spaghetti sauce, great for, you know, uh, everything else. And the thing is, is that you, you can still have a burger if you want, but, you know, kind of that plant-based with um, plant-based cheese, which yes, folks, it tastes delicious. You know, yeah. look yeah. at your breads and whether they agree with you or not, which bread agrees with you. Are yeah. you gluten-free? Are you this? Are you that? You can still have those things, but you just want to have them in a healthier manner. And I mean, with the burger, um, the portobello mushrooms is a beautiful yeah. way to encapsulate it. Or, I, or I've had it with lettuce. And I yes. know that people poo-poo it at first mm -hmm. until they take it in. And then yeah. they don't feel that sluggish way yes. afterwards. Because um, my culprit is bread. Mm -hmm. So um, I am, I person. am sensitive to gluten, and I am a massive addict to like warm breads and things like that. So as soon as I start eating breads, my sugar cravings go up because it turns into glucose in your system so quickly. I think the only breads that we should even be looking at these days are the lower gluten ones or um, I don't even go for gluten-free stuff because gluten-free is full of tapioca and all kinds of stuff that we really shouldn't be filling our system with either. So it's um, one of those catch 22s. If you're going to go gluten-free, don't try to find bread. Like, do you know, I guess, yeah, yeah. right. But um, the breads that have the live enzymes or the live, um, which, which is those Ezekiel breads, they, they seem to be a good one to help you digest it because they have this live um, enzyme going on that helps the digestion. That's mm. part of the problem is that wheat is no longer wheat. It's been really bastardized over the years. Yes. And then it's una we're unable to process and digest it. And when you think about, um, like I always let people think of visuals that help them understand why and what's in it for me. Because a lot of times you'll say something and it's it's futile. It's over their head. Even drink more water, right? right? Like as in drink more water. Why? What's in it for me? Their brain just keeps going like this. Um, oh, I have coffee. That must count. Like, do you know? Yeah, there's things. water in coffee. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they, they justify all these yeah. different things. But if they're doing weight loss, like say, for instance, and you say when that fat cell is releasing so that it's getting rid of the fat it also has a ton of toxins in it that's where they're stored if you're not drinking enough water right. the body is the body is going to coax that fat cell to stay put because it needs it needs somewhere to store the toxins or else you're going to just end up as a toxic cesspool if right. you don't have the water to push it out. Then all of a sudden the person's like, I'm going to drink some more water. Like, exactly. you know, like if I'm doing all this work, I might yes. as well, you know, get the benefit. And so the, this is back to the whole habit thing is mm -hmm. that um, there's a massive neuroscience around it because there's one thing in looking at someone that has their act together and things are going well and they're very healthy and things and they seem to be enjoying life and they're not overwhelmed by it but when you're in that hole when you're mm -hmm. stuck in that rut and you're not even sure if you want to come out of it like you're thinking i'll just live disgusting like this for a while and right. then i'll decide to do it right or the procrastination it has still been i'll start on monday i'll start on monday i'll start on monday and it's gone on for 10 years and you look at yourself and you're like what right it's it that oh, the disease taps you on the shoulder because you're not paying attention the body says well you know i've tried to tell well, you i mean the, here's here's the thing is that um, my life work is around this, mm -hmm. but I really didn't heed till mm. I got my diagnosis. Right. So right. I was what you call um, incongruent and a little <laughs> bit of a hypocrite for many, many years. I would be like, do as I say, but not everything that I'm doing, right? right? Like, yes. as because I'd eat a massive salad, I'd eat really healthy, and then I'd have a big bag of chocolate almonds and think I was all good, right? Yeah. But, but I was testing the waters in a big way. It was almost like I was a human experiment because <laughs> um, I was gestational diabetic with both my pregnancies, so I knew my risk was a lot higher. And uh, it goes up 70 to 90%. And I was on insulin for both of the pregnancies. So I knew what I was dealing with. But there again, I had a little bit of knowledge, not a lot, which is most dangerous. You're right. And I was, um, you know, I was playing around with insulin at that time. I, if I wanted a chocolate cake, I'd up my insulin. And, um, and it was that kind of denial 
that put me in the position that I'm in now where I don't, I no longer have the choice. So it's almost like some people, i.e. myself, yeah. wait for that diagnosis. Yeah. And then they're like, okay, I'm ready to change. I call but, that the cosmic two by four. Yeah. <laughs> have, you know? got, have I got your attention now? That's, yeah. right. That's right. And then, you know, like I'm, I'm 53 years old. I just had my birthday yesterday, actually. Yes, happy and, birthday. Uh, happy thank birthday. you. Yeah, thank you. And, um, and I feel great. Like mm. I really, really feel great. I know that I look good, like in, um, not in an ego way, but meaning I, I uh, like my daughter's friends and everybody else keeps boosting my ego. Right. Right. So, um, so I know I'm feeling and I'm looking good. And, um, in general, I know I can combat whatever is being thrown my way, but I really should have not should because I don't do the should have would have right. ever but I should I may have aimed to have stopped that disease from getting a diagnosis earlier yeah exactly and and the thing is is that again sometimes you can have too much information it's saturating and it's overwhelming and so therefore you switch it off right mm -hmm. or or I'm feeling okay you know it can't apply to me and then, you know, as we do get older, you know, various things in our body do start going, hey, I'm tired. I'm tired of dealing with the CRAP that's in my lining here. And I don't know how to get rid of it because you're not drinking enough water or you're not detoxing. Um, and your body will tell you. And uh, we, we need to learn how to tune into our body before the cosmic two by four. That's right. right. That's right. Prevention then, is better than the stitch in oh, time. Well, I mean, prevention is key. Prevention yeah. is also the answer to most things, um, including cancer. Mm. Um, when people are like, oh, they're still looking for a cure. Well, the, the cure yes. is prevention, but yeah, we're not really all tuned in, right? There's, there's also a numerous amount of kind of cures for cancer that right. aren't chemotherapy and everything else. That's right. That's That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and then on the other side of the the scale because we have nutrition which is huge and we could go on about that for years on yes. what we have there for us um but then movement is huge mm. i mean how many people especially these days after covid are stuck on their computers for hours on end seven hours a day yeah, yeah. and it's not cool because even an hour workout at the gym after that is not combating the eight hours that you were sitting still at the computer. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned to you earlier, before we got on, um, right now I'm standing on a treadmill. I have a little treadmill that fits right uh, under my desk and I have a stand up desk and my desk um, is at a, at a height that's perfect for me and then I also I can get up to about 3.7 I guess on the walking speed I don't have the longest legs mm -hmm. and uh and still work just fine mm -hmm. like as in my work isn't isn't in, um, inhibited at all so I find that really helpful I also find that you know um you have to start your day with movement yeah and, and also taking meetings, as many meetings as you can take on the phone, on a walk, on a hike, mm. is so much better than being still and stagnant. Now, I guess I get it when you, you're doing podcasts and you have visuals of people. Uh, walking isn't the greatest. You no. get up my nose and my ear, like, you know, like, as in <laughs> my, and people would get dizzy. But at the same time, there's got to be, um, you know, when you're interviewing the people per se, just getting on the phone with them you could ask them uh, maybe record it and then take notes from it after right right exactly there's, there's dictation um uh where they transcribe everything that was said so it's not like you even have to worry about these things anymore right. when you're out doing your thing and i would say that your health comes way before all of the other excuses that we give right so it doesn't matter how wealthy you are how famous you are you know how top of the pile you think you are yeah. if your health is down here mediocre you know you're, you're going to pay the price like everybody else That's and right. you know and not, not everybody can do you know um heavy duty exercise or thing between but you know i've got these um these rubber bands so Excellent. even just doing a little Excellent. stretching of that yeah you know, and, um, and i don't know, you know um 
I've got I've got them out there actually right now. But um, Forbes Riley has the little spin gym, mm -hmm. and you can do that while you're on there. And there's so many great little exercises with that. Yep. Thing. I've nice got a thing stuff. that massages my feet. Nice. keep the circulation going okay. and Good. the other thing is if you you know if you can't do much or you do, don't want to be sweating before the next appointment there's that wonderful thing of chi gong or tai chi mm -hmm. just you know, it's the simple stretching you know loosening Movement things up breath. you know yeah. getting the circulation going because mm -hmm. that's really what it is isn't it? it's the circulation keeping it going and I, I suffer from fibromyalgia and i know that's one of the nemesis that i have there is that circulation that's i also know that i can't do the heavy exercise but i can do the other stuff so find out what you are what you can do that you are willing to do because you can do it that's comfortable for you and you can always kind of stretch it out oh you know i'm feeling good today i can do more or i can try something else but well, it's, what, what it's I do something what i put together was a app called the five minute miracles um, it'll be coming out in 2022 and it's for people that are at their desk mm -hmm. and what I've asked them to do is at least choose four different ones during the day so it's just five minutes you mm -hmm. could choose from Pilates core yoga um, weight training restorative stretch meditation um, high intense intensity interval, um, all kinds of things, plyometrics. So I put together all kinds of ones to choose from and you mix and match them, right. how, your, how your day seems, right? Yes. Oh, I, have, I have a meeting here. I'm going to do a um, an intermediate or a beginner yoga, let's right. say, or, yes. or something, right? Yes. So, um, so I put it together like that because I just thought it's so important. I, um, I, in my job, when I was working with people, I would go and I would be active all the time because even mm -hmm. though I was teaching, I was still moving and I was up on my feet and I was going, going, going. And then all of a sudden COVID hit yes. and it all stopped. Right. And then I was on the computer for 16 hours a day with my <laughs> legs crossed because I'm yes. a yogi. <laughs> <laughs> and then in, within one month, I gained 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. I was limping because my knee was sore. I was miserable. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, this is not the way you, you proclaim to live, nor mm -hmm. do you want to live like this. Right now, you're going to put the systems in place and you're going to optimize this lifestyle of being without those other things that you were doing before and that's why right away i started to notice that even those little five minute things and now yes. i want to i want to reiterate the five minute things to any audience that's listening that is 40 and above um for women are when we go through menopause and perimenopause our ability to gain muscle is 50% harder, like mm. 50% harder to, yeah. to do that. And so if you're before menopause, get on it quick, build up the muscle lean so that you have it and the bone density. And then if you have missed the boat, it, you, you can again, but what they did a lot of studies on men and women, because so men, men are called andropause and it's a real thing, but mm -hmm. it doesn't get talked about that much. No, I've never heard of it. Right. So there's menopause and andropause. Right. And so ideally, we have too much um, elevated cortisol and our stress levels are higher, meaning the way we perceive things usually mm -hmm. at that point. And so we need to do less long duration exercise mm -hmm. and we need to shorten the time. So the key is about 12 minutes. But that's why I was saying with the five minute miracles, yes. I was I was noticing a massive difference. I I used to work out, I'd work out three hours in a day, no problem, and have fun with it. And an intense mm. exercise like sport conditioning and things like that. And then all of a sudden here I am just doing these little five minute intervals and I could notice more strength, more tone, more elevated blood to my brain. And the next thing I knew, I was back to myself. Right. Uh, and, and it was, in, it, that's why I call it the five minute miracles, because I was like, that's a miracle. Yes. <laughs> How did that happen? You know, and but, but that's, that's just the thing, isn't it? With life is that, you know, we look at, oh, I've got to exercise, but I just don't have that two hours a day. And then I'll need to shower and then I'll need to do this and that. And we make excuses. We don't happen. But if you're integrating 
little spurts along the way. And each time you do that, you feel, well, this feels good. I can go a bit longer or I'm looking forward to the next time I do it. You know, it's like the smaller meals through the day instead of the one big meal. Well, Those are habits I, that you've got. You got to watch out for that one. The smaller meals. This mm -hmm. is something I'm learning with my naturopath. Um, it's almost like that little that thing I was telling you about with the spikes. Really? I, ideally, we when we were hunter gatherers, mm -hmm. right? We weren't eating. First of all, we weren't eating three meals and a bunch of snacks. Right. right? Exactly. And uh, sometimes we were only eating one meal. Mm -hmm. and, and that was enough um and so the thing about grazing can be very counterintuitive to a lot of our bodies ah. so for myself myself this is me my personalized program i am not eating till at least 11 and i'm having one meal between 11 and one and one meal bef between four and seven and no snacking Mm. And, and that was the thing I had left, you know, nuts and seeds and yeah. things like that out on the counter, things that were healthy, but I would graze all day long, all day long. And then it just sends the insulin into kind of uh, overdrive, I guess. Ah, right. Okay. So it's just one of those things to bear in mind. Because right. No, I guess they, I, no, they've I, done a lot of testing with it and they, they added up the calories and someone that grazes Right. If they're going to be weight gain, there's going to be a lot of weight gain. Whereas someone that just had that same amount of calories placed into two meals, it's a whole different ball game. Yeah, because I have my oats in the morning with banana and raisins uh, and cashew milk. And then I have a piece of toast in the afternoon. And then I have a, my dinner a bit around six, which is, you know, then my my veggies with some form of carb. And that's so, my meals so for the day. All, all of those are, are a bit of a spike. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Ah. Like, I know. <laughs> I know. Especially, especially when we're creatures of habit too. And we get on this thing and we're like, oh, I like this, 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 right. You, um, I think take it to a naturopath and let them take a look. But it is all of those are a bit of a spike. I wouldn't be able to do that one. So oh. is the oats the spike or is it having the actually the, the oats are a little bit more of a complex carbohydrate they'll take a little bit longer it depends if it's a slow oat right mm -hmm. and um and it's good with the the fibers and things like that um but the banana like as in a full banana is a really big spike for glycemic and raisins for sure any dried fruit is is going to be a huge spike and because the oats are carbohydrate they're going to be a spike so mm. there's not, there's nothing there to slow it down, meaning fats and proteins, mm. right? Okay. So, so fats and proteins will slow down the spike of a, of a carbohydrate and a sugar or glucose. So, um, but there's nothing sitting in there that shows up as a fat or a protein. So what For, kind of protein could you add into something like that? If you are not eating, not meat? eating meat, well, you know, that, that's a good question. Um, avocado is a um, is a good fat, and that often is um, like it's a it's a high caloric thing. But because of its fat content, it's very helpful um, to slow things down. And you're not eating egg either, right? Um, I I do now and again, but I'm, yeah, I a dozen every couple of months or so. But yeah, yeah, because because uh, those those are usually um, good good proteins. But that's something that you have to really that's the tricky part of being plant-based too. Yes. Um, when I went to my naturopath, I had watched What the Health for the third time and mm -hmm. I was dead set on becoming a vegan at that point. And my naturopath said for myself that he wouldn't recommend that for me mm -hmm. because then my sugar cravings would be too high. So I make sure that it's clean sourced and I'm, I'm hoping like respectfully sourced as well. Yes. Um, I do have some friends that are in um, like that are connected that way, which is helpful. Um, but it is uh, something that I do. I add in, let's say maybe um, five meals uh, out of the week. Mm -hmm. I'll have an animal protein, but, um, but I make sure that it's sourced really well. And, um, and I think that's important for people to know, too, is that, first of all, the energy is, is something that we are connected to um, when we're eating something like that. And then also the 
like we were talking about earlier with the fat holding the toxins mm. uh, in in factory farmed meat it's just bizarre what we're taking oh, in yes. and it's mainly anti like it's mainly pharmaceuticals right oh uh, yeah i mean yeah. you know ethical organic um you know grass-fed um, yeah. animals is is the way we were always brought up and it was more respectful yeah. given the way you know we 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 killed them but now we're into this manufacturing yeah of meat, I can't which even, is i can't even like we it's all inhumane, you know? a little desensitized from it because if we didn't we wouldn't we just yeah i just yeah. like my heart just breaks i know yeah, yeah no it, it's 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 horrific yeah. it's horrific and it's like you know, people who eat the cheap burger don't realize. And, you know, I also have a theory that the anguish of the animal, the pain and the terror of the well, animal. Well, that's what I was saying. The energy is being passed it's, down. It's being passed down. Yeah, yeah, it's being yeah, passed down. So totally we're seeing so much more anger in that. people today. And it's like, you know, I think let's look at the diet. You know, uh -huh. is it a high burger, high steak, you know, of the, the unethical right. kind? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I think that has things. a lot to do with it. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, um, I like to um, give people options because first of all, I don't um, like overwhelm is never somewhere that you want to get someone stuck when they're yeah. aiming to shift their habits. And if you put too much on their plate at, at first, it's yes. really funny. Actually, one of the funniest things I've noticed in the past years is um, our society, how connected they are to their coffee. Like if you ask them to minimize that or take it out, the, they're like, it's almost like they go running the other way, right? <laughs> yeah, like as in, so, so the, and also remember, um, coffee is a laxative for many people mm -hmm. because and here's the here's the truth is that the body is not appreciating it mm -hmm. so it's trying to get it out as fast as it can so whatever's in its way it's pushing it out right and that's why i would never take someone cold turkey off of coffee would right. definitely wean them and get them into a more high fiber mm -hmm. and then more water and then they start and then there's different alternates like I am um, I'm an affiliate for a company with that has this uh cacao bliss right. which has all these beautiful antioxidants in it but it tastes like a beautiful hot chocolate if yes someone needs something warming so um and then you also do the whole uh, little cacao ceremony where you're setting intention and uh in the summer or um, whenever I can, I'll go out in the grass and ground myself at the same time. And it turns into a beautiful thing. And that actually leads in, into what I wanted to mention is that um, what I really focus on with people is their routines mm -hmm. and their micro changes. Yes. Because if, if they focus on these massive changes, like we often do on New Year's Eve, yeah. then if one thing doesn't work out, then the whole thing is thrown out the door. House of cards comes crumbling right. down. Yeah. This time. So um, I really like to focus on someone's morning routine and then their, their daytime hacks, different things that they can do throughout the day. And then also their evening routine. Now, bear in mind, those all just link together because your morning is going to be so much better started off if you've had a great evening yeah. and, your, and your sleep is only going to be better if during the day you really physically exhaust yourself mm -hmm. because mental exhaustion is going to give you insomnia, but yes. a physical exhaustion is going to allow you to sleep deeply and do that mending and repairing and everything else that's so important. So what I do in my programming, um, my Master Habits Academy, is we zone in on these different things, the morning routine, the daytime hacks, the, the evening routines, and then we place it all together with a weekly preparation and then a monthly um, intention goal setting, but we also have the barriers and the hurdles, mm -hmm. what were they and how can we overcome them in the next month? And then it, it leads into our quarterly um, mastermind type of thing, because it one blends into the next, blends yes. into the next. before you know it, you're really um, like elevated. And then I think the other thing is, is that when you aren't accountable to something, 
you can let it slip. No one knows whatever, right? right? You're, you're going to start again on Monday. Yeah. When you are accountable to something, even if you do slip, then someone's there to pick you back up and bring you back on your feet and get you yes. back on track. Support. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because all of these things that you had mentioned earlier with the chronic disease and things like that, that comes from years of constant abuse mm -hmm. or constant habit that was not serving your body or serving your cells. And a lot of these chronic diseases come in the fact that they're emotional as well. There's a mm -hmm. big emotional link to them. And, um, and a lot of times you can break those barriers by just elevating yourself with a, a proper community. And, and just like, even when I start these challenges, that's why the week challenge even works so well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the 30 day one because it gets you in a pattern, but yes. the week, week one kicks you right into gear. And so the first week of my 30 day challenge, I just watch people soaring. It's like they're on this plateau and now all of a sudden they're on this mm -hmm. plateau and they can't even get over that. These tiny little yes. things are, are changing their life. And, um, and what's funny is I get a lot of um, creatives mm -hmm. seem to be attracted to, to me and my courses and the amount of artists that start painting again oh, and things just start to really blossom. It, it is really, really inspiring to see this. And I think that too, even if you're not a creative or an, or an artist, sometimes when you find deep rooted things that you used to love, like I remember one time I was working with a CEO and uh, very, very high stress, all the things that he was in charge of. And he was also, you know, working out, but working out so hard, everything was mm -hmm. intense. He, right. didn't want to do, he didn't want to do anything like that was slowing him down or anything. So truthfully, I was watching that, the workouts could actually be very de detrimental right. because stressing. a little, little mm. more tear down, a little yes. more tear down on that yeah. body and on that mind. And then finally just started having the conversations around hobbies and what he used to like to do and things like that. And sure enough, a little bit of a, you know, old train set comes out and he's got this excitement where he's waiting for the end of the day to work on these different things that he right. had done before. You know, you know, and these are childhood things, but often those are the ones that are ingrained yeah. deeper than we know and start to really invigorate not just your your mind, but your entire being. So yes. the, that excitement just comes back. Mm -hmm. And I think it's very important to get excited about where you're going. And then that way, it's not gonna, it's not gonna last. It's just like when you're first dating someone and then you're mm. going to get married or, you know, there's the yeah. honey phase. Yeah, the, right? the euphoria and, yeah, yeah. and the plateau, <laughs> yes. But at the same time, there, if there is a community that's there to, and their job is just to gear you back up, then it can come back with that feeling more and more, which is then addictive. That yes, feeling. yes. I, I, it kind of reminds me of a show I did with, um, with a veteran. And, okay. and by his own admittance, he was a, a, like an adrenaline junkie. He kept signing up and going back. And, and one of the reasons was is that when he came back here, he just didn't know how to decompress. He didn't yeah. know how to come down. Right. right. And, and so he'd go back up again because he was used to being constantly on the alert. And a friend of his dragged him to yoga. And mm -hmm. it ended up with him changing his life completely and him opening up studios around the world for veterans and their families to That's do awesome. yoga today well, together to and reconnect to right and so it, it was he just needed something to switch him off and and put that in and you know i'm always saying this is that when we're like this the adrenaline is like this we're in a state of chaos mm -hmm. that deep breath letting it down slowing right. everything down now we can actually see the clarity but we can't see it when we're we're so right. wound up yeah, yeah, it's true. And that I love that story, though. I'm going to have to link to that episode because I think it's so important people find some purpose. It doesn't matter what age, stage of your life you're yeah. in. When, yeah. you, when you feel like you have no purpose, yeah. you just start kind of spinning gears and one day sliding into the next when you find that little bit of purpose. And that's the other thing that I love about um, 
uh, what I was mentioning, we started something called the Bright Light Fund, yeah. which was just to help, like there's enough people right now that are in need, yes. but some of them just don't, can't figure out their way in that space. So we take nominations of people that are in need. This winter, we're going to do um, a, an orphanage as well in Uganda. Mm. I do believe in, um, in keeping charity close to home. So, mm. and one of the things that I'm very near and dear to is any of the single moms that are struggling or mm. single dads, I do not discriminate. Right. Um, you know, there's single moms and dads, but at the same time, I, I know how, tricky that is mm -hmm. to to be a good parent and try to run a business yes. or whatnot and get yourself geared in so um so we want to help those people get their footing and then get empowered to be more and then at the same time turn around and do that for someone else right so that even if they don't think they have a purpose or anything then all of a sudden now we've given them a purpose right like the gift that in, keeps on giving the yeah, wonderful domino that's effect right. yeah that's right we want to make sure that people feel empowered in that space and that it's not just um you know a take thing and oh can i have some more it's right. not, not a handout it's a um it's hand a, up it's yeah yeah, 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 hand up. I like that. <laughs> Te teaching how to fish, right? Yeah. And so I, I mean, most of the time, people just need a shift you know, either shift in perspective or shift in opportunities, a shift in possibilities. And yep. somebody caring and saying, look, I've got you. Take my mm -hmm. hand. Does this help you up here? And, you know, the, the best teachers are those that have gone through it and the best givers are those that have had lack. Right. It's true. It's true. And um, there was something that came to my mind there, but I pushed it so I could hear you. Do you know, like, I wanted, <laughs> It'll you, come you, wanted It'll be, come you wanted to be yeah. present and yeah. then all of a sudden you're like, oh, what was that? That I was, what I was thinking. Oh, it'll come back. Yeah. But I really do. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So there are people that come to me when they are highly overwhelmed. Right. And overwhelmed just means you're not living presently. Mm -hmm. And so, and you get the antidote of, oh, have you tried meditating? And have you yes. done that? That's not going to happen for someone that's overwhelmed. They're going to no. just be overwhelmed with that suggestion. They're in the tornado. They're in <laughs> yeah, the tornado. They the don't tornado. know how to get out yeah. of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Like being still is the last thing yes. that they want suggested. So often I will re turn it around and say, you know, what else could you do for someone else? So mm -hmm. how can you be of service to someone yes. that is close to you or that you are close to in like for myself, like single parents, right? Like as in, and then when you start to think outside of your own box and you've put somebody else first, then all of a sudden you're not thinking yeah. like that anymore. It's right. not all about what's in it for me because I find that that is, uh, problem that we're having mm -hmm. in, in a lot of the, the youth and things is that there's a lot of entitlement issues yes. going on and everybody caring about their own state and their own and I'm not saying that you shouldn't be good with your self-care no. but if you're consumed with thoughts of oh woe is me mm -hmm. you haven't even stepped outside of yourself to see what's actually going on Right. And the difference is that you can make because you're so able. Yeah. Often. Right. It is. It's really it's really kind of powerful to give them that existence to uh, to give them an invitation to be of service. The thing is, we're actually all here to be of service to one another. And we discover what is our gift, what is our instrument, how do we play it, which orchestra do we join? Mm -hmm. um, and it is about that. Uh, this is my skill collaboratively I'll work with you in the village to make this village stronger and that actually is truly the gift that you're going to receive is when you are a giver now I don't mean a giver at your own expense where you become depleted which I've been there done that right it's hard to get back yeah. up again it's about being abundant within yourself mind body heart spirit and soul so that your cup runneth over and so yeah. that it exudes out onto other people, benefiting them. And when you are uh, able to enable somebody else into being their own light, in mm -hmm. just discovering their own light, standing in their own two feet, uh, being able to be at that stage where they can now gift forward, that yeah. is the greatest gift we can give each other as a humanity. Absolutely. Absolutely.
and it, it is um it is reciprocal like it just mm. keeps going it yes. doesn't end with you no with you just giving the suggestion yeah right? it gathers a momentum of its own it becomes a good habit yeah that's right, <laughs> yeah. That's right. there yeah. when i made the company name master habits i was thinking of three things as i made it one of them was here are the masters of the world and these are their habits um, because i happened to see for some reason, I always seem to connect with these people I would consider masters. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's not an ego thing on their part. It's me saying, I think that these people are you're, good you're, you're mentors. Tuned in. You're tuned yeah, in. they're good mentors. And, um, and then I also think these are specifically the master habits that I keep seeing. And that's why I zone in on a lot of those things. And then how do I master my own habits? Mm -hmm. So those three plays on the word was why I chose that as the company name. And you know, in the end is a, our habitual selves is a form of either societal conditioning or of your own free will. Mm -hmm. And if we know that societal habits are not working for us, we're disconnected from them, and we wish to be connected, then it's an inside out job always living life is an inside out job and when we decide to change those habits one to that serves us for the greater good then we could be the greater good to anyone else but we've first got to fortify ourselves balance ourselves be abundant within ourselves because that's when we are then able to share out. right so it is well, important to I, do that. It, it was funny when you were saying community wise because i did i'll, I'll go back i'll backtrack so when I was quite young, I was looking after chronically ill people in their homes. That was one of my first jobs. I knew I was always very caring and I, I could connect with people on a deep level. Now, if you want to connect with someone on a really deep level, you go in when they're dying. Yes. Right? Like as yes. in, because you're not family no. and you're not, um, so they're able to freely mm. express and, and release their and um and you're able to listen mm -hmm. and so i learned more from that job than i think i've ever learned from any yes. other job and dignity uh, being one right dignity yeah. and respect dignity, yeah right you treat them exactly how yes. you, you would be treated right. if you were in that situation yes and um very very deep right like very deep mm. right but lots of laughs too but mm. what i noticed from listening to everyone was that there was definitely and a time in their life prior to the illness that there was a fork in the road mm -hmm. and they had a choice to make. And, and then I realized too, that, that peer pressure didn't end in high school. Right. <laughs> and that there was an awful lot of things that society does and glamorizes mm -hmm. that was not serving ourselves mm -hmm. or our human physical body. Um, and we make those choices, you know, like as in to go to, and then here's the irony. I also was bartending at the same time. And I started my journey in personal training. And this is in the 90s. So um, and you had all that abundant energy and enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> and so, but, but here was the thing is that I was, the pub was full of fun. We laughed all the time, bad hours. People were still smoking at that time. Right, right? yeah. So as a bartender, I would like see the wall of smoke that I had to walk through and go, I'd go through it. And every night I'd just take all my hair and put it on the top of my head to go to sleep because it just stunk, right? Yes. And I wasn't home till like four in the morning and you know, the hours were terrible and things like that, but it was fun. And it was like comic relief from- Yes. Looking after the, the chronically ill and then with the personal training, I thought, what an empowering space. But then all of a sudden, a lot of my patients had passed away at the mm -hmm. same time. And at that point, I, I couldn't even get out of bed. It was like, I was so heavy with everything, because mm -hmm. it's very hard to disconnect. Yes, like yes. you're supposed to. And, um, and then I'd be serving beers, and some of my personal clients would come in from the training. And I'd be like, this just doesn't make any sense. Yes. So then, and I gave up, then I gave up the bartending and then I went to a very, very proactive space. And that's how I started the journey, just staying in 
that field of um and that field was like a undiagnosed ADD dream because mm. I did everything. I have so many certifications. Mm. It's hilarious. Like as in all the way down the line, I took everything <laughs> and it, it let you explore such openings and such diverse uh, abilities to move in different directions. Now that's what became tricky when COVID hit was that they were like, yeah. so you know, what's your specialty? What's your niche? What's your market? What's your message? And I was just like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. Like, even if I looked at my list of clients, it was so diverse. Yes. And I said, the only thing I can really say is that the outcome is that people feel a lot better and, um, and or look better and everything else that goes right. along. Right. So, um, so then I decided that um, after figuring out that I was serving about 16 different avatars, that I would, I would choose the people that had decided to pivot and work from home and that wanted to optimize their, their lifestyle ecosystem. Right. And that's, that's my, that's what I'm sticking with because I think it's really powerful, the space that I've been able to bring people to in that. It's, it's kind of the core, you know, this is the thing. Um, even where you know you you talk about like societal dictation, you know, which social media and TV and everything else is that we're meant to look like this, we're meant to act like this, we're meant to do this, we're only popular if we do that, and it's um, when we take the time to go in and look at what do I need from the inside out? How, what's my connection? How can I honor this vessel that I'm in to make it as productive as possible so that I can be useful? with my particular gifts um, out into society. It's not about what society is doing for you, it's what you're doing for society. And the better you are from the inside out, the better your production is going to be in society, elevating all those around you. And God knows we need elevation into a higher frequency of love, kindness, and consideration out there right now. And that starts with us. If we, uh, you know, if we're, unhappy with what's going on in the world we are part of the solution and changing it but first we need to change our own habits that are serving us better so we can be of service to others better absolutely it's like the old vantage right where if you if you were in the plane with your kids yeah it was going down you need to take the oxygen before you were able to help them Yes, because you're no good dead to them. Yeah, exactly. right? You know, exactly. you can't help anyone, you know. And this, and this is the thing that people are, you know, they they put this onus almost like it's like they are like suffering and they have to push through. Yes. But you don't have to. That's yeah. that's the opposite. When you figure out your patterns, it's a flow and it's a yes. beautiful flow. Yeah. And it is not arduous. It is actually exciting. And if you include your family into that, yeah. that as well, then you've got the you've got the key. Right. And there's yeah. nothing better for kids than to see their their family yes. active, healthy, happy, helping each other, helping others. Like when they witness that, that's when you've done an incredible job as a parent, not somebody that's you know, overworking, struggling, stressed out, um, irritable, you know, eating crap food and then not moving like that's just, you know, throwing the iPad at them and telling yeah. them to go to town. Right. Yeah. There's so many things that we just need these subtle shifts. Yes. And, and that's what I think that is important to know is that it's micro habits. Right. that are are the powerful ones because then you're consistent with those they add up yeah and, and you've got a whole different life and it's a beautiful one right shift the perspective you know just shift the perspective i mean our bodies can't do anything until our minds tell us mm -hmm. it's okay to do it so if we shift the perspective and we kind of look at it this way i'm eating so much sugar or i'm needing so much of that i have free will i have choice Nobody's forcing me to eat that, right? And it's like, if I shift my perspective that I wish to fortify this body, I wish to thank this body for being That's the vessel, right. carrying yeah. my spirit, my soul and my purpose, and then it is like, if I was somebody else and I was seeing them do that to their body, I would want to speak out. So yeah. speak out 
for your own inner self and right. and be willing to try, your inner right be willing to explore you know if, see a nutritionist or a naturopath uh, if you can't do that just be willing to try things out you will know in yourself yes. i'm feeling more energetic i'm feeling more positive i'm feeling yes. more enthusiastic well that means that that nourishment is actually heading up to the brain yeah but then re yeah. remember there also is the fact that a lot of us have so much junk to detox yeah. from that yes. a lot of times eating healthy might not feel good at first and you no. need some guidance through that yeah. i i it's love three months that. isn't it it's it's 90 oh, days yeah. before a system can and deletes yeah. and, and resets so we've got mm -hmm. to give it time there's no instant regratification here yeah and um i like that saying what is it nothing nothing tastes as good as fit feels mm. i like i like that, that saying because it really helps someone connect and also to have that visual like a lot of visuals around you of why or what you want to look like or feel like, you know, like maybe you have an old picture of yourself yes. even, that's even more helpful than choosing some random one. Right. But, um, but if you've been somewhere already, then you just need the little path to get back. If you haven't been there, then there's a few more steps that you have to add in. Yeah. And that's yeah. Okay. And, you know, please, no comparison you know, to either you past 20 year old, you're not going to go back to being 20. Right. Um, but and no comparison to someone else, because you your own beautiful, unique person. That's it right. is about you tuning into who you are and allowing yourself to be the, the abundance that you're meant to be. And yeah, it's give things time. What is the one thing that is consistent for anybody and everybody and everything living on this planet? Time right 24 hours in a day time we all have it it's what we do with it and mm -hmm. you know as we talked about you know you talked about your client that was so wound up and they needed to decompress and come down and find something that he could put his time into that was calming yeah right? when we get into that calm space we utilize our time so much more efficiently than we mm -hmm. do when we're so wired up yeah. and well, we've all got the same I clock but it's how we use it right yeah. And that fight or flight response, yes, fight, it's fight, flight, or freeze. Yeah, um, for a lot of people, and um, and that people are actually sleeping in that state yes. these days, which is really really sad because if you think about it, back to the hunter and gatherer, mm -hmm. you're you know you you have a shortness of breath when you're chasing an animal or you're being chased by one. Right, you, your digestive tract stops because. It, it's helping you out. You mm -hmm. don't want to have to stop and go to the washroom if you're being ch chased by Right, that, exactly. Right? Yeah. And, uh, and Pee all, break. all the different, yeah, hung out. <laughs> this is a safe tree. <laughs> but um, so, so like all, all these different systems just halt. And if you're living in that state, yeah, right? Just imagine you're not able to, to produce a, any kind of healthy cell. Um, so that even just breathing techniques that we speak about yes. very often um, help trigger that switch mm -hmm. so that you're into parasympathetic, where all of a sudden your heart rate is slower, your blood pressure will normalize, your mind moves into a peaceful state, and you start to digest and assimilate right. nutrients and, you know, mend and repair and, and eliminate and everything else that you need to do in order to be a healthy functioning physical body. You know, we, we look at our cars, we make sure the oil is in, the gas, good quality yeah. gas is in. If you're going to drive at 100 a whole time, you're going to wear and tear on that car very, very quickly. If we put in, you know, crap oil and, and, and we don't service it as we should and we don't look after it, it's going to break down. We have a vehicle here, folks. It's called a human body. It's attached to our human psyche, our and beautiful a, spiritual self. And we need to be at, and we need to be at one with ourselves, right? So look after this vehicle. Yeah, it's a marvelous vehicle too. Yes. Nothing can replicate it. It's and look so at what we can do it. with it. Yeah. Look at how even the simple look at thing how much of abuse it takes and oh. it runs. <laughs> yes, yes. And it <laughs> certainly it does. does. Yeah, because even if like, you know, if you're this side of the ground, you're you've done your number on this on this vehicle yeah. and it's still going, right? Yes. 
Yes. I mean, even look at your performers, your, your dancers, your sports people at some point, even though, you know, after each game, they may be getting a massage or this or that, yeah. you know, there, there has to be the wind down and honor the actually, calmness, right? Yeah, actually, you just uh, hit on a good point is that there's often this, uh, you want the reward system. Mm right? Like as in everyone wants the reward and like say it does take three months for you to notice yes. the nutrition, that's certainly not going to be a reward. But if you give yourself, like say, but if the next two weeks I'm doing this, I'm going to book myself a massage. Yeah. There you have this beautiful uh, reward system in place and you're doing something to keep you going because you'll be like, oh, and if I keep up for another two weeks, I'll book another one or I'll do, you know, yeah. whatever it is that that really enhances your being at that point. Right. Yeah. And, you know, there's also the thing of um, I will buy myself a new outfit because my body is changing, but don't go. I'm going to do it next week or even two weeks. I would say at the three month mark. I'm yeah. going to look at my body, how healthy it is, how toned it is, how much happier I am with myself. Then I'm going to go and buy my something because it's not something that just reflects the body. It reflects my whole new perspective on life. Yeah. Right. And what yeah. are you going to buy and what you're going to wear is going to be the new you. So wait until you kind of finish yeah. that cycle and come I into yourself. That. So that we do go over different um macro and micro cycles of, of what rewards are are really great and appropriate yes. and things that would excite you at certain points in yeah. your habit journey. So I, I love that whole thing. And I myself with business, um, I joined something called Boardroom um, with Forbes again. And, um, and she, we did this thing where you get a partner mm -hmm. and you dedicate to a certain thing that you need to get done for your business and you have a month. Mm -hmm. And what happens is, is that you give yourself a, um, like for instance, my friend is from Australia and she would have to pay her Australian prime minister who she's totally not in agreement with right now, a thousand dollars if she didn't achieve what she set out to achieve. And that, but the whole thing is, is that if I didn't achieve what I said, she'd have to pay him as well. So mm -hmm. not only was I accountable to myself, I'm accountable for her. Right. So it was really, it, it put us in a space. It's the incentive, I, right? The incentive. incentive. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking of very, very much of putting that into play with the partners in, in the group as well, coming up in the year program in 2022, because I found it really effective, not just me on the line like yeah. or, or me having to put out five hundred dollars oh well like do you know yeah. but because she has to put out a thousand to her guy yeah. then then i was like oh shoot i can't let anita get that right. that right? accountability yeah so yeah. so i i think it's a really good play i i took it mainly for that mm -hmm. i took it because i thought that's a really interesting spin on it i'm going to do that yeah right so, so tell us about the program. You've got one before Christmas and then you have one in the new year. So tell us about those. Great. So um, what the truth about the one that I have coming up, it's December 6th. And that one is um, called Mastering Life Altering Routines. And um, so that one is a seven day Kickstarter to your routines. And it's right before Christmas and it's right before the Christmas rush, rush, right? Mm -hmm. So it gets you on track. And then I want to catch you again right after Christmas, uh, January 3rd, so that we can get you back in the mm -hmm. momentum. And that one is about celebrating your wins. And it has the micro habits that I think are really neuroscience has really proven enhance your yeah. being. So we've got those two seven day ones. And really, I did that as a gift to everyone, meaning um, I'm only charging for admin. So it's $22 for one or um, $33 for the two of them together. So it's, it's a gift to seven. oneself, right? Yeah, gift yeah. to yourself mm -hmm. and get you before and after Christmas charged up. Um, then I do run a 30 day master your habits, elevate your life. And we're just actually today, we're just finishing our our month and it was phenomenal so tonight we have a lot of prizes and gifts and that and i'm going to be doing those every second month um, of the year so that one will always be running every second month and then i have a massive um beautiful foundation group that i was mentioning mm -hmm. runs in quarters 
and that one is the Master Habits Academy, and that one is really powerful. So that keeps you not only um, strengthening your, your mind, but your body and all of the different ecosystems that you're dealing with. But one of my most fond projects right now uh, has to do with the Bright Light Fund, yeah. because I, I am taking nominations for people that are in need, and um, I don't scrutinize if you really believe they're in need, then they're in need. I don't need to like know their their massive details. And I'm doing that through a cryptocurrency platform that I truly am connected with at, at um, the corporate level. And I know they're so strong because there are, I have, am involved in 11 different ones. This is my favorite one. Mm -hmm. And it's also the one that empowers people the most when I'm able to instruct them. Uh, you get to be a profit share in an eight-year-old blockchain ecosystem. And right now that's the way things are going. And yes. also to just empower people in that space. And I think you and I were talking about this already, but I seem to attract a lot of light workers into yeah. that space. And I think it's because the light workers right now, we need them more than ever Absolutely. to help the world. And um, they often, their characteristics, and this is me, assuming but um but uh, the characteristics of the ones i've dealt with mm -hmm. are that they've been helping people for so long and not um getting the proper energy exchange with money right so they themselves struggle financially and they're getting burnt out things like that so i find that the crypto space is now there almost like a cushion supporting them and then the other characteristic they seem to have which isn't my favorite is that they're not technically advanced yeah. so i will spend a lot of time helping people with wallets and all the setup but you know what it's my honor and i have no issues doing it and i also have a gift of making complex simple and really walking people through it and breathing exercises yes because <laughs> there's a lot of that needed but um i am happy to share that with anyone and it's also i have to mention this a brilliant gift idea because yes. it's a member it's a membership with a solid platform so i'm getting both of my kids membership uh, i think it's a great gift for anyone that you know might be working for you or that is mm. in their teens or a little bit older um anyone it really is such a well it's something that keeps on growing you yeah. know i'm i'm a part yeah. of that fund as well yeah. um i'm one of those workers where you know I don't see money for what I do. <laughs> you, that yeah. business side of it, I'm not, you know, it is like for me, it's the information needs to get, yeah. Yeah, the, the information has to get out. And I do everything by donation. And some people see the donation button and some people don't. You know, I yeah. leave it up to them. That's their job, um, you know, their, their journey. But for me, I'm compelled to do this because the knowledge needs to get out. Yeah. <clears throat> I am a part of that fund. And what, what's good about it is that it's really good, especially if you can get somebody in younger or somebody that's got the time on their side to, to let it grow, let oh, it grow. And it then it can be that grow. sustainability, you yeah. know, later. It's growing. It's growing. Yeah. Yeah. And it's yeah. such a strong, strong platform. So it is and it's got a good consciousness behind it. It's, you know, there's a lot of them that's just about money. Yeah. And, you know, this particular one uh, that you're talking about is about raising the consciousness and being supportive with the money so there are going to be people that are involved in it purely for the money but the, the people that, that as you say the light workers or the people that have got that consciousness uh, about them it, it is because they can see it's not just based in profit um yeah, you know share it is based in enabling and empowering mm -hmm which is yeah. what we want to see. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I couldn't agree more. And actually with the compliance for this company, you don't even, you don't even talk about the money. Right. You, talk exactly. about, you, you know what, here's your, it's a membership. Look into yes. what it offers you. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. And, and more and more we're seeing those type of things come up because, you know, we, we do, unfortunately, you know, we have this human body that needs a roof over its head and we do need yeah. money to sustain us and life is getting more and more expensive. But the calling, you know, that I was look uh, I'm incredibly enriched and abundant in, yeah. in who I am and what I do. One day, hopefully, the bank account will match. Will match but, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but you're not consumed by thoughts. I'm not consumed yeah. by that. It's uh, yeah. obviously, you know, a need and a necessity to maintain, but it is about when we look at 
putting money to work for us instead of us working for the money, yeah. then we've actually got some empowerment in place. And, and, you know, I think the other thing that's really special about like a platform like this is that we were never invited to play in this space. No. Before. And no. now there's a very easy entry. Yeah. There's no barrier of entry anymore. And all you need to do is really allow yourself to be slightly educated. Because here's the thing is that I'm not crypto queen. Right. I, can't, I don't know everything about crypto. But like I said, I have 11 different platforms now because I wanted to learn more. And I learn I'm kinesthetic. I like to be involved. Right. right. <laughs> and so um, so this was why I did it. And I was comparing the different things. And I've, I've been burned in a few, too. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so it was very, very important that I understood what happened there and why that happened. And then I made sure that the variables for the ones that I would recommend and and start a fund with like this, because the fund is not charitable, meaning I'm not yep. going to give you a tax write-off. It's people that are doing well yes, that are just gifting that to mm. somebody else to help them do well. Right. And, um, and so that part was really important to me as well. I wanted something that I could stand behind that was going to do that and, and found it, which is great. The integrity. Yeah. You know, something that serves more than just the, the pocketbook, something that serves community. You know, um, the thing of we've we've misconstrued what money is. It is a tool, and it is it's it, an energy. It's, it's an energy. energy. Yeah. And the moment that you know money becomes your driving force, you now have become a victim and a slave to that money. But yeah. you know, for the people that make a hell of a lot of money, but then take it to seed opportunity for other people. Mm -hmm. right to to invest it's in other a, people a, it's a really heartwarming thing. yeah it is totally a heartwarming it really and it's and it really where where that money should be it is mm -hmm. meant to be shared be rich take yeah. a chunk of it and invest it in other people give them the opportunity yeah. because we're we're losing so much creativity because they don't have that financial support behind them Let's give it to them so that they can go and be abundant in their own lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because nobody, nobody was put on this earth to just struggle. That, no. was, not, that was not the no. intent. Right? But because it used to be so much more community-based. The village was only as strong as everybody's participation. That's and the more, the more that everybody supported one another, that was the strength of the, of the village itself. We've mm -hmm. forgotten our village. Mm -hmm. We need to get back to that village in order I to love that. Them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did you ever see that movie they had put out on? It, you had to buy it on the computer. It was called Happiness, and they they went around the world and they were um, they were doing documentary on where the happiest places in the world yeah. were, and where it always seemed to land was where the the areas where you would like say have your own abode but it was in a communal area yes. otherwise, like communal kitchen, communal yeah. living room. And the elders would look after the little ones yes. while you, the other, yeah. like while the parents went out and had a little time together or, you know, whatever was happening. It was almost like Montessori, right? Like, yeah, yes. yeah. like adult Montessori or yes. family Montessori. Yes. And, um, and those happened to be some of the happiest places. Right, because right. people were, looking out for each other there yeah. was no one ego yeah over everyone else you know we're everybody all in this together in we're it together in take together. pride of the community there to support one another in celebration good times bad times everything and you're like we can all create a community whether it's communal life or whether it's people that you work with or people that you know is let's step out of our own insula and step into being part of the community and, and helping in any which way we can then we will actually get back to the proper flow of energy that we need in this world yeah no for sure i think that's really really true and i love when people were coming out with random acts of kindness you yes know, as, a, as a thing it was like that's great but yeah. then what would happen is like you know people were paying for other people's tim hortons and stuff yeah. and i was like that's not really where I, <laughs> I want to. But, you know, it's a start. It's a it start. Is, it is and then, a you know, start. people kind of get that thing of, God, this feels good to give. Yeah. This nice, feels right? good to make yeah. someone smile. Yeah. Right? 
I think that was the other thing that um, I went to one of those uh, millionaire mind intensives mm-hmm. a while ago with T. Harbecker. And that was one of the things that I remember very well that he said, he said, you know, we all think about it's better to give than to receive as and it's better to um, be able to be in a position where you can yeah. give than it is in to be in one where you need to receive. That's the quote. It got misconstrued over time. Yes. And then, but really giving, receiving 50, 50, it should be a constant stream. It's a flow of energy. When you're not, when you're not receiving, you're actually doing an injustice to the person that was aiming to give it to you because that would have really enhanced their position at that point. And then all of a sudden, you know, you've, you've denied them that. Yeah. So it is. I, a, I, I, I used to be one of those people. I found it very hard to receive because yeah. I was the giver. And mm-hmm. part of it was when if I receive from you, what do I owe you? Right. But when I gave it myself, I, you didn't owe me anything. You know, and that was that was a mistrust that I had to go through and open up uh, and learn to receive and understand that was somebody else's contribution, somebody else's gift. And by not receiving it, I'm basically slapping them in the face. Right. Yeah, no, really, really true. Really true. So yeah, so thank you for having me on. I really My pleasure. appreciate that. And I re- it's amazing how quick the time Oh, is yeah, that. no, it goes, goes yeah. beautiful flow. How do people get hold of you? How sure. do they sign up for, for these courses that you've got going on right now and in the new year? And mm-hmm. also the, you know, the, the Bright Life Fund? Sure, sure. So um, right now, I'm just about to launch my masterhabits.com site. Um, But until then, the the challenges are on masterhabits.ca. On the .com site, just so you know, I've decided to affiliate with different products that I think are very considerate and health enhancing. Mm -hmm. So I will have a whole bunch of interesting ones on there for business, entrepreneurship, for reading materials that I think are brilliant, uh, for organization and for self care and self growth. So I've I've itemized them like that. Um, Then the Bright Light Fund, um, you can get it soon on brightlightfund.ca, but at the same time, you can just email me at info at masterhabits.com. Excellent. And of course you're on, Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn yeah, and people I, go yeah. and and, uh, and you can DM me on Facebook right now I have those 5,000 friend limits but often yeah. when, I, when I get the message I just put you there and if someone's tired of hearing me or whatever and they drop <laughs> off I put you back in right <laughs> right yeah. right um and you know that's that's the thing about the more you know we are able to do for other people but you know the the gratification of knowing that somebody is leading a better life because of your input. You know, it is something that you can take great pride in because we're, as I said, the whole reason we're here is to be of service to one another. That's you know, true. discover what our gift is and how to share it, how to strengthen someone else, how to help them find their own gift. And, yeah. you know, you've known yours for a long time. You've used yours in, in many different ways and you keep on finding new ways in order I to do. share it. I wish I could rein it in, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Slow down, I, Russell. Slow I, I, down. I, yeah, I feel like a little bit of an explosion, but at the same time, it's an awesome explosion. And I, right. I'm very gift, grateful to have those gifts. Right. And, um, you know, it's funny because as you were saying it, I was flashing to different classes I've taught. And um, I remember, you know, for the longest time, they asked me to teach restorative when I was right into the high intensity. And I would be like, why, why, why me? Like, like, why am I having to slow down and teach mm. this? But then what I noticed very quickly was that people would come in one way. Mm. And after that hour, they left a completely different way. And I think that that's one of the most um, heartwarming things is to see someone's see someone's gratitude, even yes. in their physical body, as they're walking out or as they're participating in any of these classes where they are just completely childlike again, where yeah. it's almost like they just had magic happen. Right. right? I'm, yeah. And we're all capable of receiving magic, doing magic. Yeah. That's We've right. just got to be receptive to it. 
We've got to be willing to put in the work and realize that nothing's going to happen by a downloadable app or wishful thinking. It's yeah. going to happen if you're willing to participate, yeah. to be interactive and to be proactive. Don't beat yourself up one step at a time. And that one step will become a larger step, maybe a leap down the road as you get more confident, but just start off with the one step at a time. No persecution, please. Um, we don't need that. It's that's going to be self-sabotaging. If you trip and fall, just get yourself back up and get back on track. Or let someone help you. Exactly. That's what you're there for, to yeah. help let someone help, you know, yeah. help them get on track, get into their own flow you know, live their own possibilities, their own abundance, uh, you know, mind, body, heart and soul. Because when you are healthy in your body and you're healthy in your mind, my God, can you see the possibilities? Right? Mm. Contagious. Most, very <laughs> contagious. Very. Yeah. So it is masterhabits.ca, masterhabits.com coming very, very soon. And um, the bright lights. Um, dot Actually, com. It's, just, it's just called bright light fund. Right, like fun. CA or dot com. I'll have right. them linked. Yeah. Right. So I'll have a different link to that right now. If you just go to her show page and, you know, folks reach out, have a chat, see if, um, see if Michelle's a fit for you. And the whole point is nothing can happen until you decide you're going to make it happen. And nobody's asking you to reach, you know, the stratosphere. It is one step at a time. Just yeah. one step at a time, one habit at a time just micro going through life until all of a sudden you look back and go, oh my God, I've come far and I didn't know it. <laughs> True too. Thanks again, Sarah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, so folks, you know, this is a good time of year to kind of start putting things to practice. And most certainly, you know, those New Year's resolutions are not just there for you to break. They're there for you to change your perception and what you're going to do for yourself. And the best thing you can do for humanity right now is invest in yourself because the more abundant you are, the more your cup will run off over for everyone else. So until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.